Germanic or Teutonic languages characteristics. Throughout the period from 2000 to 1000 BC, the Germanic branch of languages was in a constant state of flux. These languages are distinguished from the other branches of the Indo-European family by many important characteristics. They are Grimm's law, Werner's law, a blot, the Teutonic accent, the verbal system, simplification of the inflectional system, and declension of adjectives. Grimm's law. Grimm's law is also known as primitive Germanic consonant shift or the first sound shift. It refers to the changes which the Indo-Germanic plosive consonants underwent when the primitive Germanic group broke away from the parent language. It was Erasmus Ras, the Danish philologist, who discovered the first sound shifting. But it was formulated as law by the German linguist Jacob Grimm and it came to be known as Grimm's law. In his book, Deutsche Grammatik, Grimm stated the law which he claimed to be underlying this change. There are three sets of changes in Grimm's law. First one is the aspirated voiced plosives th, th and th changes to unaspirated voiced plosives b, d, g. Voiceless tops p, t, k changes to voiceless fricatives f, the her. Third one, voiced plosives b, d, g changes to voiceless plosives p, t, k. In detail, Indo European aspirated voiced plosives b, d, h became unaspirated voiced plosives b, d, g. For example, in Sanskrit, the word brada changes to brother, which is the corresponding word in modern English. So here, b sound changes to b sound. Likewise, in Sanskrit, we have madhya and in modern English, we have middle. In Sanskrit, we have hamsa. In modern English, we have goose. Indo-European voiceless consonants p, t, k became voiceless fricatives f, d, h. For example, in Sanskrit we have pita, whereas it changed to f sound. The p sound changed to f sound as in father in modern English. In Latin freighter we have in modern English brother. And in Latin press, we have modern English three. Here, the t sound changes to either the sound as in brother or the sound as in three. And it is spelled as th. K changing to h. Latin, we have cordum. And in modern English, we have heart. K sound changing to h sound. Then Indo-European voiced plosives b, d, g became voiceless plosives b, t, k. Example, Latin labium changed to Old English lipa. Latin dentum changed to Old English tooth. Latin genu changed to Old English neo. The second characteristic that is the Werner's law. Werner's law came as an exception to Grimm's law. That is, as per Grimm's law, the voiceless plosives p, t, k became the voiceless fricatives f, d, h. But in pair of words like Latin kentum and English hundred, k became h and t became d instead of d. This exception was explained by Carl Werner in 1875. He said that accent played an important role in these changes. Accent was variable in Indo-European, whereas in Germanic languages, there was a tendency to fix the accent as far as possible to the root syllable. 
Werner statements. In initial position, the voiceless plosives F, T, K became the voiceless fricatives F, G, H. In medial positions, the voiceless plosives P, T, K became the voiceless fricatives F, D, H. Only if the preceding syllable was not stressed or unaccented. If the accent fell on the following syllable, the voiceless plosives P, T, K became voiced plosives B, D, G. Werner's law is most clearly seen in the various parts of Old English strong verbs. Strong verbs originally had the principal accent on the root syllable in the infinitive and preterite singular, that is, past tense singular. But in preterite plural and the past participle, the accent was on the suffix. Consequently, the infinitive and preterite singular shaved Grimm's law and the preterite plural and past participle illustrated Werner's law. For example, the sound changing to the sound to become where then, where, were done, warden, to go, lidan, lad, lidon, lidden, to say, quaden, quaid, quaden, quaden. No rotacism. The sibilant s sound also changes to the voiced z sound, which was later replaced by r sound. This phenomenon is called rotacism, that is, s sound changing to r sound. For example, to choose kiosen, kias, kurin, karin, to lose foliosen. Folias, Folurin, Folurin. Now, her sound changing to g sound. Werner's law is also seen in the interchange between her sound and g sound. For example, to flee, Fleon, Flea, Flugon, Fergon. To see, Sion, Sia. Sagan, Sagan. And the third characteristic, a blot or vowel gradation. A blot is a process in which the vowel sounds undergo a change according to whether they occur in a stressed or unstressed syllable. It is most clearly seen in the principal parts of a verb. There were several series of vowels which changed in this way the chief one being the IAU series. Each member of such a series is called a grade and the whole phenomenon is called a gradation or a blot. The addition of a suffix to the root of a verb to form a tense or participle involves the shifting of the accent. This leads to a modification of the root syllable. The six classes of Old English strong verbs are Class 1 To ride Ridan Rad Ridon Ridin Class 2 To choose Kiosen Kias Curon Kaurin Class 3 To sing Singen Sang Sangon Sangen Class 4 To bear Baran Bear, Baron, Boren. Class 5. To eat, Eten, Eight, Eton, Eten. Class 6. To stand, To standen, Store, Storden, Stanton. Variations. All the verbs which served gradation in Old English did not survive into Modern English. For example, help an, help, halpen, help, helped. In modern English, we find a number of words which form the past participle with the addition of ed, were, originally graded. 
vowel gradation determined by whether it occurs in a stressed or unstressed syllable can express a change of meaning as in can he do it can he do it can he do it so here there is a change of meaning as the expression changes the fourth segment is the Teutonic accent. Indo-European was pitch-based and primitive Germanic was stress-based. In Indo-European, stress could fall on any syllable of a word, while in the Germanic group, the tendency was for the stress to fall on the initial syllable. As a result, the unstressed syllables at the end of the words tended to become weak and were finally dropped. This tendency accounts for the reduction and loss of inflections in English. Example, to bear. Indo-European, bearonom. In primitive Germanic, it became bearanen. Old English, it again became bearen, which changed to bear in modern English, sorry, in Middle English and bear in modern English. Fifth one, the verbal system. Primitive Germanic inherited a number of strong verbs from the parent language. That is, verbs which indicate a change of tense by a change in the vowel, as in write, wrote, written, or ridden, rat, ridden. Besides the strong verbs, Primitive Germanic invented weak verbs which formed the past tense by adding the or the. In Old English, the weak verbs became the majority. In Modern English, weak verbs are referred to as regular verbs and strong verbs as irregular. Sixth segment, sim Simplification of the Inflectional System Primitive Germanic had only five cases while Inter-European had eight. The five cases are nominative, Accusative, genitive, the dative, and instrumental. There were separate inflections for the singular and the plural. For example, stone. In nominative case, stan, stainers. In accusative case, stan, stainers. In genitive, it is stains, stainer. Dative, stain. Stainum. The seventh one, declension of adjectives. In Inter-European, the inflections of the adjectives were the same as the noun inflections. They had to be put in the same case and number as the noun they were attached to. In Latin, we have three forms of the adjective great. A great master. Magnus. Magnus Dominus. A great house, magna dormus. A great work, magnum opus. Strong and weak declensions in primitive Germanic. When a possessive, a demonstrative or the definite article preceded the adjective, it had a weak declension. When the adjective occurred alone before the noun, it had a strong declension. For example, in Old English, we have God man, that is a God, a good man, which is a strong declension. But say God a man, it means the good man, which is a weak declension. In modern English, there is no change in the form of the adjective. And finally, in a nutshell, the seven characteristics can be summed up as First one, Grimm's Law The changes which the Indo-Germanic plosive consonants underwent when the primitive Germanic group broke away from the parent language. Werner's Law, it came as an exception to Grimm's Law and it says that accent played an important role in these changes. Third one, a blot is the process in which the vowel sounds undergo a change according to whether they occur in a stressed or unstressed syllable. Fourth one, the Teutonic accent, that is the tendency 
for the stress to fall on the initial syllable leading to the reduction and loss of inflections in English. Fifth one, the verbal system. In primitive Germanic, they invented weak verbs. Simplification of the inflectional system. Primitive Germanic had only five cases. They are nominative, accusative, genitive, dative and instrumental. Declension of adjectives. Primitive Germanic developed strong and weak declensions. In modern English, there is no change in the form of the adjective. Thank you.